Hey, Tom. Well, I'm hoping Saturday's win uh, kind of propels us, and I say that in a different way. Uh, Saturday, I thought, was the first win we had where the grit had to be there, uh, physical. I mean, we felt like we've had some performances against Baylor where we backs were against the wall and we came out and played at a different level, but Saturday it was physical play and that made a big, big difference. I hope we can take that, move forward with it. We've challenged our veterans that, you know, they've got to play at a different level now down the stretch and so far I think we're getting some of that. Uh, see if we can carry it on the road. In Minnesota, a team that we played here last month, I didn't think played great. I thought they played well. I think Ben Johnson is, and there's a lot of good coaches that have done good jobs this year. I'm not sure anybody's done a better job than he has, uh, unless it's Chris Collins. Uh, you know, not that the other guys haven't, but I think Ben Johnson has done an unbelievable job. Kind of reminds me of the same kind of way my career went. I have a great respect for him and what he's doing, but now he's assembled a team where he's kept some guys together. He's got some, uh, um, he's kind of put a fence around his state. He's doing it the right way. They've won their last two games. A big win, of course, against Northwestern. They got beat by two by Wisconsin. They've got some good home wins. They've been a very good home team. Garcia is, you know, scoring 20 a game in the last five games. And he had a good game against us. Cam Christie is playing better and better as he gets through his freshman year. And Elijah Hawkins kind of makes them go. Um, it's the peripheral guys, Mitchell, that hurt us last time. And uh, Payne kid has played really well. He's a kid that had the back injuries early. So they've got a formidable starting five that uh, I think can play with anyone in the league. I think uh, Ben Johnson has proven to be one of the better, the best young coach in the league. And uh, we have a great opportunity. So for us, it's an incredible opportunity to go up there, go on the road, and uh, and see if we can sweep a team this year like we did Maryland. Questions? Hey, Tom, um, you and Malik both talked about your exchanges, and Malik went on to talk about the growth that you feel both of you guys have had. So at this point in your career, 69 years young, 700 wins in, what does coaching relationships mean to you now as it relates to relating to players? You know, it means more to me now than it did before because I think before it was automatic, you know, usually for the most part, the coach, the title gave you some flexibility. Now it gives you none, in my humble opinion. Um, and I say none, that's a little bit strong, but I just don't think if you look at our country alone, there's not as much respect. I think it's got to be earned every year. And that's okay too, you know, it's been an adjustment, but it is okay. I mean, every team's a new team. And, uh, you know, young, young people in general think they have more power and more say. And uh, I think our country negatively has given them more power and more say, I think. We have two because I think experience does matter. So the difference is, is we have to convince them that our experience has got a big value to it too. It's not just your power to say and do what you want, but if you, if you get experience from people that have been there and done that, now you still can have a stronger say in things, but maybe just, um, understand and learn so the relationship matters because they're not going to trust anybody because of the title anymore those days are gone and uh, and maybe I'm okay with that because I've always built this on relationships not transactions so if I do my job with the relationship and they want to have more say and they come and talk to me about it and that's where the give and take is on maybe understanding people. Um, you're in a profession where understanding somebody is very, very, very valuable and important. You can't help somebody if you don't understand them. And they probably aren't gonna listen to you if they don't understand you. It just takes more time. It takes more, uh, um, the relationship is good, but when it's done, 
you have a stronger bond. Mm -hmm. You just hope that you get that bond before it's done. Mm -hmm. So that they don't say four years later, you were right. They say during the time you were right with Malik. Um, I've always had a good relationship with Malik. And I mean, he's, he's more complex than some people, but he's very intelligent academically. He's very intelligent basketball wise. Um, he's had a lot going on in his life. Uh, not necessarily negative, just a lot to deal with. And I think he's, um, he's probably playing the best basketball of his life right now. And I think some of it is because he's more comfortable. And some of it is because I think, you know, he's asked me a hundred times in his career, what do you want from me? And, you know, so I pick a game here, I pick a game there. I want that on a consistent basis. I said to him the other day, you know what I want from you? He said, what? I said, what you've been delivering. I want that on a consistent basis. And if that happens, we're gonna be better. I'm gonna be better and you're gonna be better. So it's a win, win, win. That's kind of where the, uh, the relationship has gone. And I'm, uh, I'm excited about that. that. That means two parties have gotten together. Not that that was adversarial, but to understand what it takes to be great mm -hmm. because he is playing well you know and I told him the other day so what you know what would I like you to do a little better because I'm never satisfied and I sent him a text that night remember now never satisfied so your rebounding has got to get a little better mm -hmm. I like to get to the free throw line a little more like you did in this game I like that to be consistent and uh, his response back was I got you so it's been good. I mean, it's, it's one of the more enjoyable things you get to do in this job is when you see somebody that you help, and believe it or not, somebody that helps you because I don't care if you're 59, 69, 79, or 89, the minute you quit learning and quit wanting to learn, you should, probably should die. So I'm planning on learning. I quit learning. I want to stay alive. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, so you've like Big Ten and across the whole sport, road wins are even harder to come by this year than normal. Any thoughts, ideas, you mean why that is? You know, I, 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 I my thoughts are, um, which I think with my own team, is to win on the road, you have to be physically tougher and mentally tougher. And I think, in general, in our society, people are physically not as tough and mentally definitely not as tough and that's the difference you know and everybody looked at my first year's teams and we talk about Cleves a hundred times he was physically tough not half as tough as he was mentally you know mental toughness right now is is something that I think is very important and a mental toughness means that you go into a place like Minnesota or any place on the road and and mentally you believe you're going to win, you sell that to your t players, I meaning your teammates. And coaches are always going to sell, but teammates are selling it to them. And I think uh, that has a lot to do with why people aren't as good on the road. I just I think some teams aren't as mentally tough, and I think there's getting to be a lot more of that. A lot more players aren't as mentally tough. And so you get aided at home by all your friends. When you go on the road, you don't have any friends. And that's where it's got to come from within. And uh, so that's an area we we're trying to keep growing on too. That's my excuse. <laughs> Somewhat along those lines, you mentioned about the grit factor uh, of the win over Maryland, but what did January maybe do to build some of that within your team? And, and particularly thinking about that Minnesota game where you had to kind of withstand some physical punishment, just what that game and, and getting that second time around on some of these teams helps with? Well, I think January, you know, we've had our back against the wall a little bit more than normally uh, in my career. We've had a few years where that's happened, but had not a steady diet of it. And, uh, and you know, I think one of the things that I do good and, and sometimes it doesn't come across that way is I always deal with the white elephant in the room, you know. I mean, I, early January, I said, hey, guys, you know, we used up our our uh, our opportunity, our, our options, you know. We can't have a lot of bad games now. You know, we've won 10 out of 13 games, but 
late in, in December, you know, it probably started with uh, Baylor. You know, we just, we can't afford that luxury. We let one or two games slip out of our hands. I won't say five or six. Some teams just were better than us and beat us. But one or two games slip out of our hands. And, and when you're in a dogfight like you are uh, at this day and age, um, so addressing things in January helped us. And I think, um, you know, we've played pretty well in most games. Illinois there, probably the lame duck one. You know, Wisconsin here it wasn't great that that was early December, but I thought uh, Illinois, we played very well down there. So we played probably pretty well in 11 out of 13 games now, and uh, that's decent consistency. I wouldn't say we played real well, but I think addressing the white elephant in the room you know, most people run from controversy, and I just said, you know, don't blame the media, don't blame the coaches, don't blame your parents, don't blame your girlfriend. Look in the mirror and figure out that this is where we are. Excuses aren't going to matter, um, and we got to turn that around. And I, I, I do think we have. I think Malik's help because I think he's healthy, and uh, even when he in December, November, you know, he hadn't played in so long, I think that's part of it. I think, uh, you know, AJ has grown gradually, and, uh, you know, and I think Jaden has grown, and, um, and you know, the, I think the help of, of Trey Holloman has really been good too, you know, and now he's going home, how's he gonna handle that, you know? Who knows, but he has been as consistent, as steady, as good defensively, and a lot better offensively than I thought he would be. Um, so that's been improvements. Um, I think the next step for us in the last nine or 10 games of the regular season is, you know, we got to get Booker going. We got to get Carr going a little bit. Talked to some buddies I have in the profession today at Tennessee and other places that have good freshmen. And it's not much different all over the country. You know, there's exceptions to the rule here and there, but um, but I think for us to take one more step, I think that's going to be important. That's what we're going to work on. Hawkins was out last time you guys took on Minnesota. Um, now that he's back, how much of a different team do they look like and how do you prepare for that? You know, they are different. Uh, unfortunately for us, when he was out, it created some problems when he was out because we had prepared for him until that night, number one. Number two, the guys that came in and played, I think it gave more freedom to Mitchell in that. And he played really well in our game, you know? And so it probably helped them because they realized there's some other people and then getting him back, he's not shooting it as much as he did before he, he was out and other guys picked up. And now I think they have, a, you know, that's where Ben has done a great job is he's kind of brought the two groups together. Christie's getting a few more shots. Guys are getting a few more shots. And uh, he's become maybe the ultimate passer. He still can shoot it. But uh, he's good defensively. Uh, where we had a little bit of problem last time is they were so big then, you know, they were 6'4", all the way across to 6'11". And uh, at least there's a guy in there more my size now. I don't know if that'll help me or him, but uh, God love the little guys. They're obviously a little different. I'm wondering the second time playing teams though, if there's a, like you guys remember how that game felt, just like they remember how the first game against Maryland felt. And if, if, in terms of respecting an opponent and knowing what you're getting into, yeah. if that helps take, I'm not, you know, not just take the game seriously, but if you know what I mean by that. I know exactly what you mean. I mean, I mean let's, let's be honest about it. Minnesota has been on the bottom for a few years now, you know, and now he's taken that team, made it more competitive last year, but now they're damn good. I mean, they're good enough to be an NCAA tournament team. They're good enough to compete in the Big Ten every night. I mean, and I think our guys do know that, and I think that will be a plus. But still, at the end of the day, you got to play the game. But um, there is nothing like – we have no business not respecting anybody because of maybe how we played at times. But there's still that. I mean, some of the guys have been here three, four years, know that for three of those years, Minnesota wasn't a very good team. And uh, to his credit, he's made them a very good team. And I think our players do understand that because of the way the last game went. You know, we had a lead, too, and 
just they've been relentless of of uh, which is really a mark of good good team, good players, good togetherness, well coached. They've been down 10, 12 in more than a couple games, you know, and come back. And even the Wisconsin game that they lose by two, um, that was a game right to the wire. So uh, they played some of the best teams right to the wire. Uh, they're winning now their share of games. I think if you polled a lot of people, I'd say, you know, he's definitely a candidate for coach of the year. And, uh, and that team is definitely risen to the level now where they're not the bottom dwellers. They're not the team that people don't respect. I think people give Garcia great respect. I think they give the point guard respect. I think Christie has done a, a very good job as Professor Mitchell has really come on. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't think there'll be anything um, or anybody's taking anybody lightly, that's for sure. Why is Williams Arena such a difficult place to play? And your program over the years, I think you've won a lot of games there, but there have been some pretty memorable close battles. Oh yeah, back when, when we were really, really good, you know? Well, first of all, when Clem Haskins was there, um, we had some wars, man. I mean, uh, that was, you know, that's the way basketball was played them, and they were tougher than nails. And but we have had some good games up there, and but they've always been close, um, no matter if we're really good or just good. And uh, Williams Arena is a different place, you know, with that floor. I mean, I remember having to get behind Judd and push him up the steps. You know, that was a that was a job in itself, and it's different. Um, Coaching up there, you don't feel you have the same connection sometimes with your team and your assistant coaches, but it's also a great venue when it's rocking. I mean, it's a great venue, and um, and I think they've done some really nice things there. And they're getting their crowds back. I mean, it's all part of his building. And you know, five years from now, I think we're going to say, "Wow, he did it the right way. He did it gradually. He worked his way up." But. Uh, I played at Williams Arena against Flip Saunders and Kevin McHale, and, uh, a guy named Osborne Lockhart, and, uh, uh, Whiney, and uh, well, the Thompson. I mean, they, they were one or two in the country when we played them. We uh, had an assistant coach who was good friends with their head coach at the time. And so we stalled, I think, the last four minutes because we were the first school they didn't score 100 against in eight, eight, eight tries at the beginning of the year. And uh, so I think we lost 97 to 50 some. Garland wasn't hot enough, it was the problem. It was all Mike's fault. But uh, I remember playing there, and uh, every time I go in there, of course, it brings back those memories. But they've had some very good players, very good teams, and now they're getting their crowd behind them again. And it's going to be a, a difficult game, but it's going to be a difficult place to play as the years to come because I think Ben Johnson proven he's here to stay. Was that elevated floor as a player? Probably? Yeah, it was even elevated more. Yeah. Uh, they dropped it down not that many years ago, a little bit, you know, but but it was really elevated. I remember taking the charge on a, on a real good guard they had uh, that played for the Knicks and uh, ended up off the court, you know. and. Uh, it's a little better now. It's not quite as as, as much easier to get up on. Uh, so in fairness to Judd, you know, he kept asking for an elevator or uh, you know move, moving uh, steps. But uh, I just try to stay up on top. I didn't go up and down like he did. So it's a little easier on me. Well, Tom, uh, Saturday you mentioned after the game you were going to try to catch Tennessee, Kentucky. Were you able to check that out and say you want to do some measuring and what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I really did because we had played Tennessee early in the year. I talked to Rick Barnes, I talked to John all the time. And uh, I think it, it it looked like, I mean, John's team played very well too, but it was still men against boys. You know, you got all these veterans from Tennessee and, um, and both really good coaches. And um, what I saw is, um, you know, you still got to be able to defend and rebound, and, and John's team shot it pretty well. They had a guard that scored 35 points, but went up and down. But uh, two good teams, completely opposite. One of the few teams that is playing a bunch of freshmen is Cal's team, and uh, 
if you look on the other side, one of the few teams that's playing none, Josh Minow, Rick's team is, is very veteran oriented and uh, and good guard play. And uh, the connectable kid that played really well here is still playing well for him and he's a fifth year guy. So um, we still got some work to do, I think, to get back to that, but we do have a measuring stick of when we played him. And, uh, you know, now the chore is that uh, we got to go on the road and win a game and then see what we can do as the schedule gets tougher. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Tyson tied your program record, I believe, for consecutive double digit scoring games. Just wonder your reaction to that and, and what it says about, I guess, his development, his role, how it's changed over time and going from a good, you know, point guard to score to not a very good score and just what you thought about him. Seven. Well, I love Tyson. I mean, he's. Uh, He's, uh, I mean, he's, he's just, he's been unentitled. Uh, that's the best word I can use. He's not an entitled kid in any way, shape, or form. You know, came out, went to a prep school, uh, to, you know, to get an extra year to get better. He's got a brother that went through it and played in Europe. His parents are phenomenal. They, uh, they expect him to do his job. He's graduated already. Um, what I think is either one of two things right now. We're playing him a little bit too many minutes and people are really getting after him too. Sometimes following him and I've complained about it and grabbed it, but sometimes just trying to wear him down and uh, we got to do a better job <laughs> subbing him. I, you know, we, I say that, it's hard to do it. He's in good shape, but we're asking him to play defense on one end against bigger, stronger guys. We're asking him to get through things against guys that are covering him and everybody's putting more of an emphasis on him. So, you know, I talked to him behind him in a film session yesterday where he's got to get more movement, he's got to do more things at, at a, he's got tremendous burst speed, you know, I mean, he'd be a great 40 yard dash guy. And yet, I think he conserves it. So. We had to talk about his defense, getting back to where it was, his offense, and maybe us dialing down three, four minutes makes a big difference, you know? And uh, so we got to do our job. He's got to do his job because I think he's ready for a great run down the stretch here. He's put himself in a position where he's set for personal awards. He helped his team win games, and, uh, and he's been fun to coach. So, uh, yeah, Tyson's been more than I thought I was getting. And... Uh, and I think part of that is because he came in with an appreciation of going from here to here and an appreciation of things he was given. And plus, like we always say now, you know, everybody blames everything on other people, you know, teachers, coaches, this, that, government, you know, parenting is still an important part of, of a kid's development. And uh, he's got great parenting. So that, uh, I think that means he came in um, with a little chip on his shoulder where he wasn't at an appreciation of where he is and that's a great combination to have. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you a little later. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thanks. 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 <laughs>